In 54 years, 54 years, there have been a total between the WWF, WWF, WWE names, 137 championship reigns with the company's namesake title. 137 world championship reigns with that namesake belt. Only 22 of them, just a shade over 16%, have been by non-white wrestlers. And The Rock has eight of those. And even The Rock doesn't count in the black wrestler that was a WWE champion category. You can't count him in that category. You want to know why? Because for 20 years, The Rock hasn't counted himself in that category unless he's getting ready to release a movie with Kevin Hart. Otherwise, he's Samoan all the way, and he doesn't hide from that, and he's not ashamed from that. He doesn't have a tattoo of the cradle of motherfucking civilization Africa on his goddamn arm. He has a freaking tri Samoan tribal tat right over here. So you tell me what he associates with. And then the WWE has always done everything they can to emphasize High Chief Peter Maivia and distance him a little bit um, from Soul Man Rocky Johnson, his dad, who, if anything, should be who he was more closely associated with. So if The Rock doesn't count himself as black, and we know he doesn't, and the WWE doesn't count him as black, unless it's Black History Month, and even then they really don't emphasize it very much if you really noticed, um, he doesn't count. So to the dipshits that keep saying he counts, he doesn't count. And even if he did count... You're still talking about a guy who's went on to become arguably the most popular actor in the world. So it was a one-off fluke type of once-in-a-lifetime type of bullshit. Still doesn't help the case. And really, once you take him out, it really hurts the case because there has never been an all-black WWE slash WWF slash WWF champion over 54 years. And that's ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying that the business was just teaming with 100 or 200 of them that should have been, but there were some. And every once in a while, it'd be nice for some of the black fans, which is a sizable portion of WWE's fan base, to have somebody that kind of looks like them that they could sit there and kind of gravitate to and say, you know what, that's my guy. He kind of looks like me. He acts like me. Not this dancing, rapping, hip-hopping, suspect-ass, sissy, pants-sagging bullshit. But... Somebody that is viable, somebody you could take legitimately seriously. But of course, the WWE doesn't see it that way. And that is ultimately all the doing of one man, that trailer part piece of trash, Vincent K. McMahon. Just think about that. In 54 years, zero all-black WWE champions. Horrible. So what I wanted to do is bring this important issue to me to light a little bit more and talk about some of the more notable ones, the six black wrestlers that I most feel like should have been WWE champion but weren't. And for the most part, especially with the top five in the list, to me it largely had to do with their skin color. In the mid-90s, you looked at Ahmed Johnson and he looked like a main eventer. He looked like a guy that was going to break the mold for the WWE in a lot of ways. He looked like he was going to be a future world champion. He had a million dollar look. Unfortunately, he probably had $2 ring skills and 25 cent mic skills. He had some injuries, especially the kidney problems. And then there were reports of the bad attitude. And it kind of derailed his career before it could really ever get off the ground fully and take off. But... In this particular case, while it's not so much the WWE's fault because he really wasn't there long enough to where you could build him up to that point and the times where you did build him up, so stuff would happen and it just kind of would have unraveled. In theory, from a historical standpoint, you look at a guy like Ahmed Johnson and he is somebody that should have been a black wrestler that could have been WWF champion. In this case, I don't blame the company as much, but looking, for, again, from a historical standpoint, it's one of my biggest disappointments over the years because, again, the guy had the look. He had an intense kind of presence about him. He should have been. He didn't, and ultimately, he only has himself to blame. Bobby Lashley was a prolific amateur wrestler, a four-time NAIA all-American. Granted, lower level of college competition, but still a four-time All-American, a three-time national champion. You get this dude into WWE. He's got some mixed martial arts background. Uh, you decide that you're going to make him a two-time ECW champion and a one-time United States champion. The biggest real spot you gave Bobby Lashley was in 2007 when he and Umaga were basically a plot device for the Battle of the Billionaires and the Trump versus McMahon bullshit, which all revolved around ultimately Stone Cold and others shaving Vince McMahon's head. 
You look at Bobby Lashley, and you see guys in recent years like freaking Jinder Mahal and Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose have all been WWE champion, but Bobby Lashley couldn't elevate above the level of being a plot device for Trump versus McMahon at WrestleMania 23. What a steaming pile of horseshit. And for all the shit we could give a TNA slash Global Force Wrestling slash whatever the hell they want to call themselves, at least they got this right. And think about that, how ridiculous it is that a Southern-based wrestling company in the heart of the Confederacy, whether you want to talk about Tennessee or Florida, doesn't freaking matter. These states, where they name highways and schools after Confederate traitors, was more willing to make a guy a serious, credible world champion than the WWE was. I'm surprised they didn't give Bobby Lashley a dancing and or rapping or suspect ass gimmick because that's what they love to do. But the fact that Bobby Lashley never touched the WWE championship is a fucking joke and a major mistake for this company with a proud history of mistakes in terms of how they treat their black wrestlers. While he's technically only number four on my list, there might not be one that angers me more than Shelton Benjamin. Here was a guy with a legit amateur background, Brock Lesnar's college teammate at Minnesota, two-time NCAA All-American. You bring him to the WWE, he was a part of that notable OVW class from the early 2000s that featured Lesnar, Batista, Orton, Cena, Charlie Haas, and so on. He's a three-time IC champion, two-time WWE Tag Team champion, one-time United States champion. You put him in a total of five Money in the Bank matches at WrestleMania, and at no point in time did he ever sniff the WWE Championship. Now, I know there are going to be a lot of people that will sit there and say, well, Shelton Benjamin didn't have the greatest charisma. Shelton Benjamin didn't have the greatest mic skills. Give me a fucking break. Randy Orton. I rest my case, and I promise you Shelton Benjamin was better in the damn ring. The differences between Shelton Benjamin and Randy Orton are as such. Shelton Benjamin was black. Randy Orton was not. Randy Orton got a major force. Shelton Benjamin did not. And it is that simple, other than Shelton Benjamin was vastly superior in the ring. And especially in an era now where so many of the hardcore fans, which is all the WWE really has left going for them, Love the in-ring action more than anything else. The fact that Shelton Benjamin can't be a WWE champion, but in recent times, a guy like a Bray Wyatt or freaking Jinder Mahal or Randy Orton has been, is absolutely sickening to me. What an incredible waste of an opportunity. And you had so many chances. Like, think about it. In 2008, 2009, you had CM Punk win the Money in the Bank ladder match. 2008, when he wasn't ready. 2009, it was overdone. And then 2010, when the moment is right, instead of going with Shelton Benjamin, you go with Jack fucking Swagger? So he can cash in and become a world heavyweight champion? Excuse the fuck out of me. But if you think Jack Swagger was a better talent than Shelton Benjamin, you need your fucking heads examined and we should be questioning whether or not you're a racist. Oh wait, that's the WWE. Fucking sickening. And I know what I just said about Shelton Benjamin, how it gets me as angry as anybody on the list. The other one that's really, really close is probably Ron Simmons. Here's a guy that was one of the really big early stars for Bobby Bowden in that Florida State Seminole program. A two-time consensus All-American, ninth in the 1979 Heisman Trophy voting, played for a few years in the NFL and the USFL. At one point in time, I believe he was Lex Luger's teammate. He's at WCW. He's a former tag champion. He is the first ever black world champion of a major American wrestling company. You bring him into WWF and you put a Spartan helmet on him and you call him fucking Farouk. This is the type of shit that this company has consistently done over the years to their black performers. Here is a guy in Ron Simmons that is as clean cut and all American as any of them. And they decide that they're going to bring him in in 1996 and put a fucking Spartan helmet on him. Because that's going to get the black hero over, right? And even then, he got past that 
you founded the nation of domination around him, and that shit got over. Then later on, it was the Acolytes, APA. He was a part of all of that. That shit got over. But at no point in time, even though he was a three-time WWF tag team champion, was he ever made WWF champion. And that is ridiculous. And again, like I referred to with Bobby Lashley, where a Southern-based wrestling company treated him as a more viable and serious top guy and made him a multiple-time world champion. Here is Ron Simmons, who WCW out of Atlanta, Georgia, right in the heart of KKK Confederate country. In 1992, they could make him their world champion. It was an awesome, incredible, inspirational type of moment. The WWF, again, I will emphasize, brought him in and called him Farouk, I think it was Farouk Assad, wasn't it? And they put a freaking Spartan helmet on him. How the fuck can you look at Ron Simmons and think that he deserved a Spartan helmet? Furthermore, out of all of these years, why couldn't Ron Simmons, if it was good enough for WCW in the South, why the hell wouldn't a Northeastern-based company like WWF's headquartered out of Stanford, Connecticut, think at some point in time and some point away, especially when you look back at a year like 1996 or 97, especially where they could have used it, can you possibly think that a Ron Simmons wasn't WWF championship worthy? It's just ridiculous and a joke. And if Ron Simmons was white, he would have had eight to 10 WWF title reigns. And that again is a fact and everybody knows it. And I know what some of you are going to say about Mark Henry being number two on the list. Well, he was a world champion for WWE. He was the world heavyweight champion. And I don't care how many times God had that title. Ultimately, that is the second-rate world title in WWE. And everybody knows it to the point now where that belt isn't even around. The WWE decided they wanted to create a universal title. So that pretty much addresses that. Mark Henry was never WWF slash WWE title. He never had the company's namesake title, which is always their number one world title, no matter what anybody wants to say. And it's so ridiculous because Mark Henry was a three-time national weightlifting champion, Pan American Games gold medalist, two-time U.S. Olympian in 92 and 96. You bring him in and you do all types of dumb shit with him, like sitting there and having him talk about how he lost his virginity to his sister when he was like eight years old and he had just had sex with her a couple of days ago. He gets into a sexual relationship with a 70-plus-year-old woman called Mae Young who gives birth to his love child a freaking hand. This is the type of dumb shit they do with their black wrestlers that they don't do to the same degree with consistency they do with the white wrestlers, period. And even when you look at Mark Henry, here was the world's strongest man, easy billing for a company that loves their big, beefy dudes because Vince McMahon loves his big, beefy dudes. See, the World Bodybuilding Federation for all the proof that you need. And the best you did for years was make him a European champion where I believe, if I remember correctly, that belt was handed to him by the Memphis mid-card piece of crap and a one-time ECW champion. The guy was good enough to work with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 22, but it took until 2011, when this guy was about 40 years old before the company finally gave him a monster push and put the world title on him, followed all the way through, and oh my God, the SmackDown ratings popped a little bit. Can you fucking imagine that? Somebody that the fans knew for years and they freaking respected, and oh, by the way, wasn't white, and he just beat Randy Orton. Yeah, people are naturally going to be a little more interested. And what's so ridiculous about it is he still never carried the WWE title. He still never had the company's namesake title. But in his time, up until he finally won a World Heavyweight Championship in 2011, the secondary title, the WCW NWA Inferior title, Sheamus got three fucking title reigns, and Randy Orton got five. Sheamus got three of them. What was so compelling or so incredibly massively interesting about Sheamus, no offense here, but even Smokey would have agreed. We're talking about Mark Henry. And he never got the WWE Championship. But Sheamus got it three times in a relatively quick, less than 12-month stretch. And Randy Orton saw it five different fucking times. We know why they got it. Like, even with Sheamus, 
He was so white, they couldn't wait to put it on him. He, I thought he was going to end up with 35 title reigns by the time it was all said and done, especially being Hunter's lifting buddy. But then they realized that he wasn't that good. But he still got all of those title reigns out of it. Why? Because he didn't have the same affliction that Mark Henry did. He didn't have that black itis. He wasn't a black man. He didn't have that pigment disease that the WWE is so freaking scared off by. The fact that Mark Henry had to wait until 2011 to become a world champion for the WWE when so many fucking scrubs over the years have held the world title and even then he still had to get the secondary world title on the secondary show SmackDown is an absolute joke and an absolute statement about the racism that still exists within the WWE. Jack fucking Swagger was a world heavyweight champion before Mark fucking Henry. How ridiculous is that? And now we get to our number one black wrestler that should have been WWE champion. Let me name off the resume. 10-time WCW World Tag Team Champion. 6-time WCW World Television Champion. Former U.S. Champion. 5-time, 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 5-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion. But when he gets to WWF slash WWE... It takes Booker T five fucking years to touch a world title. And once again, because he was black, just like with Mark Henry, five years after this, in 2006, they had to put the secondary world title on Booker T because we're not about to have the black man touch our namesake belt. We'll, we'll make him a multiple-time United States champion because ultimately that was still a WCW belt. We'll make him an IC champion one time because, again, it's the mid-card and it's not the main event. It's not the top dog scene. He was a three-time WWF slash World Tag Team champion, but, again, those are mid-card titles, and he was an entertaining enough performer where we trusted him in that type of spot. It took the company, the guy who came in as part of the shittiest angle in wrestling history, the invasion angle, he came in as the WCW World Heavyweight Champion, so that way they couldn't wait to freaking have him drop the strap to rock at SummerSlam 2001. It took them five years to make a former five-time WCW World Champion a World Heavyweight Champion of any kind, and even then couldn't give him the A-belt. Gee, I wonder why that freaking was. Like, you look at some of the WWE Champions between 2001 and 2006, and World Heavyweight Champions even between 2001 and 2006, before Booker T finally got his reign. You had guys like RVD, JBL, who got a 280 fucking day title reign. The big show. JBL got 280 days as the longest serving heel transitional world champion in WWE history. He got 280 days and freaking Booker T couldn't sniff the WWE title scrotum. And the world heavyweight champions, you had Benoit, Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, are you really going to tell me that Rey Mysterio, no knock, but seriously, was more worthy than fucking Booker T? The same Rey Mysterio that in 2001 WCW was rolling around with the filthy man animals and wasn't even wearing a mask? But because Eddie died, we could sit there and make him a freaking world heavyweight champion, but Booker T's got to get to the back of the line. Oh, imagine that, just like the back of the fucking bus. And even when you look at his WrestleMania history, WrestleMania 18, he loses to Edge. God went over him at WrestleMania 19, which still pisses me off to this day. So many things pointed to, you could have lost that one, God, and got it back later. But give Booker the WrestleMania moment. Give some of the old WCW fans and some of the non-white fans, and frankly, some of the white fans their moment. But we just couldn't do that. Ugh. He's a part of a fatal four-way tag match at WrestleMania 20. He wins a pre-show battle royal at WrestleMania 21, and then ultimately jobs to the boogeyman at WrestleMania 22. Think about that, 22, 2006, the same year he ultimately is all hail King Booker, the king of the ring, and ultimately goes on to win the World Heavyweight Championship several years too goddamn late, and in an entirely manufactured WWE kind of character because, we, again, we couldn't have that Booker T that was a five-time WCW World Heavyweight Champion, be our namesake company belt title, WWE Champion, or even our secondary old WCW title. This is how stupid and ridiculous it is for the black wrestlers in WWE. You have a talent 
like Booker T, a legit top guy type of talent, a multiple time world champion with another major company. Even if it was in the dying days of that company, he was still ultimately a five time, five time, five time, five time, five time WCW world heavyweight champion. And he comes to the WWE and they can't even be bothered to give him back kind of the belt that he brought to the company five years later until they decide to give him an entirely different gimmick and have him do an entirely different shit. Put a WWE spin on Booker. This is the type of bullshit that the black wrestlers in WWE have to deal with. And with all these other names that I talked about, and it angers me, especially once you start getting into the Lashleys and the Shelton Benjamins and the Ron Simmons and Mark Henrys, the single biggest abomination, in my opinion, in the history of WWE as a black wrestler that should have won the WWE Championship but ultimately didn't, and predominantly to me, only because of his skin color, was Booker T. Think about that. Jinder Mahal's had the WWE strap. Bray Wyatt has had the WWE strap. Booker T never touched it. What a goddamn joke. And I wonder why that is.